<clears throat> All right, January 10th, forward bending practice this week. Emphasis on sailing the kite of the sternum. We all know the shape of a kite. So the four corners of the sternum, not just the four corners, but the four sides. Oftentimes we, we're pretty good at being aware of the upper lobes of the chest, but less uh, aware of those lower two corners and sides. So as we do forward bends today, we're gonna really try to keep a lot of awareness in this area. As we do forward bends, everything in the front body moves back except for that sternal kite. So that is the one area that remains forward. So we're gonna start just centering ourselves, preparing for the practice, allowing the, the mind and the body to align in real time. So take a couple of moments arranging your seated position. If cross-legged does not suit you, you can always modify that somehow. And you're gonna take a moment just to try to clear the flesh out from under the sitting bones. You might draw it directly back from underneath. You might rotate your thighs, rolling the inner thighs down, another way to do it. And then just take some time to feel more balanced across the sitting bones, front to back on the sitting bones, try to arrive to the centers of the sitting bones. And then you can build on top of that, so shoulders above the hips, Feeling awareness to that sternal kite region, lifting the crown of the head, softening the face, and then taking the hands onto the legs somewhere that allows your elbows to descend, your shoulders to descend. Turning your gaze away from the brain. Inviting the full weight of your legs to really settle, to release. Checking in with your groins, your hips, attempting to release any gripping going on there. Same with the shoulders, which tend to kind of stay on duty, just releasing the shoulders. And you might start to use the in-breath to kind of ride up the spine lengthening upward through the crown of the head. You might allow the exhale to be a repeating reminder to keep descending parts of you that are moving toward the floor into the floor. Bring some attention to the abdomen. We all carry some amount of tension in the belly. So just take a few breaths to invite some movement into the belly to attempt to release some of that gripping that goes on there. Remember the abdomen can swell sideways and up just as much as it pushes forward and out. And then take a moment to check in and see if there's any intention for this practice, for your day, for yourself. This could come in the form of a word. Maybe it's a feeling, maybe it's an image. Maybe it's a mantra, a string of words. We'll bring our hands together in front of the heart center. <clears throat> On an exhale, bowing toward your heart. Release your hands, lift your head. Let your eyes gently blink open. Welcome. We start with a heart opener, reclining. So ideally, if you have a bolster, that's the best prop, but if you get away with a block, you don't have a bolster. You can roll a couple of blankets to create or imitate the shape of a bolster. Otherwise, you can work with a block and you can play with what level of height you're comfortable with. It's gonna run across the shoulder blade region. 
And then you'll probably want an additional block or something to support your head. So if you're using a bolster, you can place a block or blanket, whatever you prefer. We're gonna take a seated position. So whatever your crossing just was, just alternate the crossing of the legs. <clears throat> We're attempting to hit the space that runs kind of across the armpit line, the back body, shoulder blade region, right behind that sternal kite. So it's not about pressing your butt up to that bolster. You're going to draw the buttocks away from it and try to recline back so that you're really feeling lifted in the sternum area. And then your head should have appropriate height. So what that means is that we want the chin at least level with the forehead. It can also be lower, just not higher. So we want to have the chin neutral or pointing toward the chest. And then you're going to take a goal post arm position. So what that means is your elbows are extending outward from the line of the shoulders. You have 90 degree elbows. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can try to relax the arms in another way. You might unfold them. You can also prop the forearms if you have something easy to do that with. But we're gonna start here just to kind of bring some lateral opening across the chest to the flesh of the chest up into the, the front shoulders. And like I said earlier, your lower back should be really neutral if you're feeling or aware of your lower back. Like our emphasis last week, if the tension is kind of lingering there, you might need to lift your buttocks, pull them away from the bolster and try to lengthen out the lumbar spine. So try to create weight in the arms. It's gonna help the chest really start to expand. Every time you breathe in, you can float that kite of your sternum just a little bit higher. And think about when you exhale, you're trying to keep that kite flying. So you're not attempting to let it dip. You're not allowing it to dip. And as you start to lose sensation, you might need to kind of advance to a new arm position. You'll move your elbows above the shoulders and grab your forearms or elbows, whatever is more comfortable fit for you to hold on to. And again, the weight of the arms is really useful here. So we're positioning ourselves in the gravity field to help us open in a more passive way, which sometimes is more effective than a more active way. And we're essentially just imprinting the front body here for this practice. So if you've gone into the crossed forearms, just take a moment to switch the forearms, switch the crossing, and we'll stay another five breaths. You're going to start to release by just extending the arms first overhead. And then you can soften the elbows. You can step your feet to the floor and ease yourself to one side, starting to move away from that reclining position. We're going to be moving to seated for a little bit here. So it's good to have support underneath you. So bolster is fine. Blankets are fine. If your hips are a little bit, um, today or gripping, take your blocks and just position them in a way under the thighs that you have support that you can feel your legs kind of become more passive and heavy. And once you're seated, just take a moment to move the flesh away again. Just feel like you're sitting up tall. If you don't feel tall, you need to add height underneath you. That's a simple remedy. There's no wrong amount of height as long as you support your knees and thighs. We're going to start with a clasping hand position behind the back. Your uh, favored interlocking hand position is fine. And we're just going to take both hands over to the left side body. 
And hopefully you can catch your hands kind of outside the body so that you can just kind of um, plug it in there. You don't have to kind of actively hold there. You're, you're kind of leveraging the position. Hold your hand there. We have this elbow poking out to the side. So you're gonna clamp the left elbow back. And what we're doing here is really training the flesh of the shoulders and learning the rotation of the shoulders that it's really necessary to maintain and forward bend so that we don't collapse the chest and the sternal kite. Be aware that you're not poking the abdomen forward or throwing your back into a hyperextension. Be aware that your head isn't thrown forward. Keep your head over your spine. Be aware that your eyes aren't bulging out of your head. Okay, keep moving the elbow toward midline, even if it starts to open up again. Soft eyes. Really use your imagination. Think about the flesh of the right shoulder traveling slowly cell by cell from front shoulder to back shoulder. Okay, so we'll gently move to the other side, start softly release. This is can be a big exit here. You might feel a lot. Change it to your alternate interlocking hands. Just so we're always moving in to different habits in the body. You're gonna catch the hands to the right side body. And then again, taking that right elbow and just kind of tempting to bring it toward midline. So it's kind of hidden behind your back body. Get the tailbone in, lift and float that sternal kite, all four sides and corners. And then again, you're bringing awareness to left shoulder now, the flesh traveling from the front shoulder around to the outer shoulder to the back shoulder near the armpit. A couple deep breaths. One more breath in and out. And gently you're gonna soften out of those arms, extending your arms into like a Shavasana position. Have your palms facing forward. So your hands should be lower than your shoulders, just like you're lying down in Shavasana, palms facing forward. Look to one side, either side doesn't matter. Checking in with the inner elbow, okay? That's what we're gonna observe here. Look at your inner elbow, whatever arm you're looking at. Take your palms to turn toward the ceiling. Observe the inner elbow starting to face up. Okay, keep the inner elbow facing up. Now rotate just the lower arm and hand back to facing forward. Don't let the inner elbow move. If you still see your inner elbow facing the ceiling, you've done the rotation of the shoulders that we have to really learn and maintain for the work that we're doing today. So relax, soften. We're gonna do it to the other side. So whatever arm you just looked at, you're gonna do the other side. When you're ready, when the arms are refreshed, go back to your extending arm shavasana, seated shavasana arms. With the opposite arms looking over there, palm faces forward, check out the inner elbow. Now turn the palms to face up, see both arms, even though you're only looking at one. Inner elbow faces up, keep it there, isolate the lower arm, turn the palm back to facing the front of the room and the camera. And again, you just did it, good work, relax your arms, roll the shoulders a couple times, front to back, big circles. Okay, another wonderful position to practice for working with open chests and good external shoulder rotation is Gomukhasana, which is our cow pose. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna fix, which is the term they use in Light on Yoga, BKS Iyengar's Bible of Yoga. So we're gonna fix the bottom arm first today rather than the top arm. And we're gonna begin with the right arm being fixed first. So you're gonna take your right arm behind your back and with your left hand, grab your right wrist and just pull the right arm until you sense that the right elbow is in line underneath the right shoulder. So don't go beyond that. And then you're gonna to try to keep your elbow where you've placed it. So you have to do some work now because you're gonna let go with the left hand and see if you can slide your right back of your hand up to the dorsal spine, which is between your shoulder blades, without your right elbow poking back out to the side. Okay, we're not gonna worry about a strap today. You're gonna keep thinking about the flesh of the right shoulder, cell by cell, traveling from the front shoulder to the back shoulder. Keep working with pinning the right elbow in so it's not poking out, and then extend your left arm up. Revolve the arm, palm faces back. Strong revolution of the arm so it's as far as you can go. 
Elbow above shoulder on this side as well. Bending the elbow, touch the mid back. Don't worry if your hands don't meet. Go ahead and try to find that space between your shoulder blades. Maybe you feel the fingers touching. Maybe you're clasping, I don't know. Elbow tips back, tailbone in, skull above the spine, and just bringing attention to bottom arm, shoulder area specifically. And the presence of the hand to the back body as scaffolding for that sternal kite. Okay, just a few breaths. Go ahead and soften out of it. You can release both arms. A couple shoulder rolls for fresh recover. Lead your shoulders back and down. Left side, so we'll run the forearm behind the lower back. Right hand is going to be the helper. You're going to pull on that wrist. You're going to draw the left elbow in line with the left shoulder. Then try to really hold it there. Release the grip of the right hand. Right hand can sit down. Slide the back of the left hand to the dorsal spine area. You might lose some of that perfect alignment of your elbow, but keep tracking the elbow toward midline. Think about the flesh of the shoulder moving front to back. Extend the right arm up. Revolve the arm as completely as you can, palm facing back, thumb points out to the side, elbow above shoulder, and then hinging at the elbow, touch the dorsal spine region, and then float the elbow tips back, both of them back. Couple deep breaths, attention on the bottom arm, rotation of the shoulder specifically. A couple more breaths. Okay. Now go ahead and release. Extend your arms. Roll your shoulders. Okay, we're going to come into a wide squat because we're preparing for malasana, which is garland pose. We are going to do a few binding poses today. The binds in our forward bends are weight are functional ways to help us keep the sternal kite forward and buoyant. So to prepare for malasana, we're going to do a wide squat. And if I see anybody that needs modification, I'll show it. But let's see how we do first. We're going to come into a wide stance on our mats. But it's a squatting position. Okay, so you're squatting already. I call it the cowboy beam cooking position, which is very ancient Sanskrit. Just kidding. So <clears throat> toes point out to the side. Your arms are within the space of the legs. Okay, you're attempting to get your torso upright. It looks like we're okay. I can't see Linda very well. Thumbs up or down, Linda? I can only see the top of your head. Was it down? Okay, so those of you in the squat, you're going to bring your hands to prayer and attempt to get your sternal kite into the thumbs and attempt to use your thumbs to rub up on the breastbone, shoulders back. Those of you that want to try a different position, come onto your back. And you're going to come into the kind of the happy baby position, which is just an inverse position of what you're doing, everybody else is doing squatting. You're going to draw down on the big toes and try to bring your shoulders to the floor. Shins above the knees. So not a bent, uh, not a closed knee here. Good. So that's your modification. Those of you that are still squatting on your feet, a couple more breaths, shoulder blades in, sternum forward. Think about the flesh of the shoulders, rotating front to back. That is true for those of us reclining as well. Okay, if you're doing the squatting position where your spine is running against gravity. So those of you with your feet on the floor, you need to gently contract your pelvic floor, shuttle the energy up, because otherwise we have this big kind of dumping energy on the spine, okay? All right, so those of you that are still on your feet, bring your hands forward. You can come onto your knees, come into a hero pose, you can come into a th thunderbolt pose, which is sitting on your heels. It's kind of a modified hero pose or take another position to release yourself. So since we have a few people on the floor who are 
I'm not going to do malasana because if you didn't do the wide squat, you're definitely not going to do malasana, which is a more narrow squat. You're going to come into kind of a reclining child's pose. So I'm going to show this modification first. You're going to be raising your arms, feet together, knees wide, attempting to grab the outer ankles, and then clamping your knees in and attempting to get your shoulders to sit back down. Okay, so once again, you start with your knees together, feet together. You're gonna to reach toward the ceiling without your shoulders popping off the floor. Then you'll let your knees separate. You're gonna reach for your outer ankles. Once you have hold, squeeze the knees back in and try to get your shoulders back to the floor. Okay, for those of us doing the feet down on the floor squatting position, you're gonna join the feet, join the knees and prop your heels with a blanket. So there's sufficient propping. You have something to press into with the heels. It's important because we need to anchor into the heels here. We start with knees together, feet together, arms extended out, palms facing down, shoulders pulled back, shoulder blades pulled in, sternal kite flying high, pelvic floor is lifting. Feet stay together, knees separate, Hands come to the floor. Crawl the fingertips forward. Feel that sternal kite sinking into the back body. You don't want that. So scrub the floor at the fingertips, move it back out all four sides. Bring it back out, the sternal kite. Okay, then you're gonna go for the ankles or even the heels. Do you have the length in the arms? Again, we feel the chest contracting. Squeeze the knees in, pull the chest out. Look forward, good. And then last but not least, bow the head. Because we're going to do a deep forward bend, but see about shoulder blades and shoulders helping the sternal kite stay aloft. Good, look forward, hands back out in front of you. Inhale, zip the knees together, arms align with the floor. And go ahead and bring your knees down. Cross the ankles and sit back. Okay, legs out in front of you. And if you're on the floor, just full recline Tadasana. You can stay on the floor reclining Tadasana. Just get your legs straight, your quadriceps firm, your knees anchored into the, the flesh of the thighs. And just a couple of breaths. Deep flexion for the knees there. So just opening the backs of the knees. All right, so we are gonna do a few standing poses. We're gonna come into downward dog through cow pose. <clears throat> so you'll find your way to hands and knees. We'll come into a few cat cow poses just to warm up the spine. <clears throat> so from a neutral spine, begin on an exhalation rounding as if you're contouring your front body over a giant beach ball. And you can also move the sternum into the back body just for this. Inhale, arch the back, bring the chest forward, bring your eyes forward. And keep going with your breath. So exploring the depth of each side of this with the breath, let the breath Keep you there a little bit longer. Be with the full length of each side of the breath. There's no rush. The next time you find yourself in cow tilt, which is where we have a big arch in the back, we have a lifted and spread chest, we have our gaze forward, you're gonna stay there. This is a beautiful setup for downward dog today because we have so not cat pose, some of you are still in cat, cow. So look forward, arch your back. Your back looks like the good side of a spoon. Good, okay. <clears throat> this is a good setup for us today because we have the pelvic tilt where we want it for forward bend, which downward dog is. And we have the chest where we want it for our theme of the day. So go ahead and curl the toes underneath. Keep a strong cow tilt. And on an exhale, Attempt to extend your legs, but keep the chest really forward and the pelvic tilt still active. Don't worry about anchoring your heels down. It's really last 
and kind of least. So don't worry about the heels down. Keep the pelvis tilting forward, shoulder blades inserting toward the chest. Remember the inner elbow eye spiraled up to the ceiling, but then counter it with that lower arm action, keeping the inner elbow eye facing up. Two more breaths. Start to tiptoe in. And just kind of dangle. So be a rag doll. Soft knees, grab your elbows if you want. You can have empty coat sleeves for arms, whatever feels good in your body. Couple deep breaths. And then you're gonna bend your knees, firm your stomach muscles, come all the way up. And place yourself in mountain pose. Legs together, feet together if you can balance, otherwise feet up to hip distance apart. Shoulders back. Turn your palms to face forward, which feel what that does in the upper arm and in the shoulders. Okay, maintain what you have in the upper arms and the shoulders. Turn the palms back to facing your thighs. Close your eyes. You might at first feel like you, your feet are just pasted to the floor. As you start to soften the feet and balance the feet, maybe imagining little tiny roots descending out of the feet into the floor. Tailbone moves in, the skull adjusts back so that it's right above the spine. Just imagine the sternum high on the wind. Good. Now go ahead and release all the efforts of the pose. Open the eyes, shake the limbs out if you need that. <clears throat> We're going to come into a version of warrior three. So all, you might not need to turn sideways, but I'm going to for your view. We're gonna do warrior three with the arms back. And it doesn't have to be that perfect capital letter T shape. You might just minimally be tilting the torso and leg. So it's not about your deepest warrior three today but we're gonna use the arms in such a way that we're gonna, as we fold forward, which warrior three is a forward bend technically, uh, we're gonna to try to really use the arms in such a way in the shoulders that we feel that sternal kite taking loft. I don't know if that's an actual expression, taking loft, but we'll say it is. So from standing mountain, revolve your palms to face front, face forward, which as we know, helps our shoulders sit back helps the flesh of the arms do the correct rotation. Step fully into your right foot and step your left big toe slightly back. Not to the point where you rotated your left pelvis or hip back. So if you did rotate the pelvis, correct that and try to align the hip bones, okay? So you're kind of rolling your pinkies forward, your thumbs back, which we can feel all those good effects from that on the shoulders, chest, the shoulder blades. On an exhale, step fully into the right foot. Launch the left leg. You don't have to go into a crazy deep warrior three, but really try to keep attention on the sternal kite. Lifting, lifting, lifting. As we fold forward. Inhale, you're gonna come out of it. That's it, good. Shake it out. Beautiful. So I saw a few people's heads flying six feet forward in front of the spine. Make sure your head is tracking with your spine. It's very inviting, our gaze pulls us forward, but we wanna keep our alignment. Okay, so second side, from mountain, revolve the arms, palms face forward. Maybe even bring the pinkies slightly more forward than the thumbs. Pouring weight into left foot, step the right big toe back, compact your hips, square the hips, and on an exhale, start to lengthen, the torso forward, the leg moving in tandem in opposition with the torso. And use those arms. And then on an in-breath, you'll come back upright. Good. And then relax the limbs, shake the legs, shake the arms. 
imprinting. We're really imprinting here. So we're going to go into a deep Parjvottanasana, hands free. If you sense, you might be able to touch upon the hands free, but then have a moment putting hands down. You'll either put your blocks at the short end of the mat or your chair seat. So you want to always have your safety net because we don't get very far in yoga if we're um, having the fear that we're going to fall or something. So blocks or chair. And we're not doing jumping out today just to keep things more simple and fluid. So you can face that blocks or chair or just the short end of the mat. <clears throat> Step your right foot forward, left foot back. And make sure the legs have hip width, that you're not on a balance beam. Interlock your hands. Lift and roll the shoulders back and pull the hands toward the floor. And imagine the hands are an anchor point for that sternal kite to launch from. Tailbone in, flesh of the shoulders in your awareness. Even if you can't feel it, you can imagine the cells in the Petri dish just pooling toward the back of the shoulder. Okay, tailbone in, big inhale. On your exhale, come halfway forward over your right leg. Keep pulling the hands away from the sternum and the sternum away from the hands. On an exhale, go into your full Parjvottanasana, hands go up, chest dips down. Maybe you need a break and put the hands down on your blocks of the chair. Now we have to work against gravity here to roll the shoulders away from the floor. Good, everything in the front body floats back except that sternal kite. On an exhale, sorry, on an inhale, lengthen up, 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 up. Wonderful. And then you can go ahead and step the feet together. Release your arms. You might need to give them a little shake. Put yourself in mountain pose. And do your little arm rotation trick if you want. Palms forward first, eyes of the elbows forward, and then revolving just the forearms and hands back. Let your breath do its thing. So if it's a big, loud, fast breath, be a container for that. Try not to stifle the breath. Okay. So second side, left foot stays forward, right foot stays back, right toes have a very slight turnout. Hips stay aligned, facing forward like headlights. Both legs stay straight. Go to your alternate interlock. The other pinky is loose, feels more awkward in the body for most of us. Roll the shoulders back, fully extend the elbows and put something heavy in your hands, like you're holding a brick a long way. Tailbone in. Float all four sides of the sternal kite. Top of the in-breath, exhale, hinging forward halfway only over the left leg. Your nose lengthening out beyond the big toe. Resisting the sternum away from the hands, the hands away from the sternum. And then on an exhale, go deep. Keep the sternal kite aloft. Think about the flesh of the shoulders. You really got to bring attention there. Gravity will have them round toward the floor. That's not going to be helpful. Roll the flesh from front to back. Spiral the inner tips of the shoulder blades toward the front body. Anchoring into the feet, lifting through the crown, use an in-breath, come all the way up. Good. Go ahead and step together. Maybe shake the arms before you come into Tadasana and see what remains. Notice how the poses leave their mark with the energy, the breath, there's a vibration. Okay, the last standing poses we're gonna do are the four wide standing forward bends. So I want everybody to have their two blocks. 
you prefer a chair seat, that's perfectly fine. <clears throat> if you're using blocks, just leave them on the tall setting. We'll only go into the full forward bend on the fourth Prasarita Padottanasana version. So bring your feet wide. So your one of your own legs could fit between the feet, ideally. Toes in front of the heels. Grab the floor with the outer foot, lift the inner arches, suck the outer ankle bones in, revolve the inner thighs out, all those wise actions. So the first version, we're bringing our hands to the blocks. So start with an inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, raising the arms. And use the arms to create space in your torso. On an exhale, tilt the pelvis forward like you're pouring something out the front rim and bring the hands onto the block so they're right underneath the shoulders. Balance your feet. So we're gonna play with opposition. Everything in the front body and the trunk, you're gonna float back. So think about the belly like the underside of an umbrella and just spread the belly toward the back body. Again, you're resisting gravity. Gravity would force the belly to poke toward the floor. So we're resisting that. Spread the belly toward the back body, but don't let the sternum come with. So as the belly floats back, the sternum floats forward. Okay, wind your arms, your hands are down here. So inner elbows toward the camera. Yep, and that's gonna help your shoulders and shoulder blades and chest, it's gonna help everything to keep that sternal kite aloft. Okay, so that's version one. You wanna come up safely, tether the navel to the spine, use your abdominals, take your hips, come all the way up, and you're gonna leave your hands on your hips for the second version. So make sure your feet are still in good position, your legs are still in wise actions. With the hands on the hips, elbows to midline, so it's like you're tucking them behind you. You might need to slide your hands closer together you might even use your thumbs as a little manual push on the tailbone. Tailbone moves in. Okay, come to the top of an in-breath. There's that sternal kite. Keep it in your awareness. Exhale, tip the pelvis forward. Keep the elbows clamping, which will help you resist gravity with the shoulders as we start to face against gravity here. Keep looking forward. Okay, balance your feet. You guys look great. Okay, don't let the belly blast open to the floor, underside of an umbrella, scoop, scoop, scoop. Elbows clamping. Good, inhale, come up, that's hard work. Good, all right, clasping, next version. Interlock your hands. Familiar interlock is fine. Roll the shoulders back. There's that brick in your palms again. Elbows fully extended, straight arms. Revolve the shoulder blades in, flesh of the shoulders front to back. Inhale, float the kite. Exhale, keep it floating, hinging forward. Tilt the pelvic bowl. Scoop the belly toward the back. Good. Legs are straight, feet are balanced. Good. Resisting gravity, those shoulders you want to curl down. Don't let them. Inhale, come up. All right, so the last version, like I said, we're gonna do the full forward bend, which is a big toe hook. That being said, if that's not for you today, you can come to your blocks, any height of the blocks. You're gonna to go to your deepest. You can come to the chair if you're working with the chair. You're gonna to go to your deepest forward bend, and we're gonna really keep the attention on the sternum. If you are going for the big toes, the hold is the first two fingers and the thumbs, hook the big toes, which is nice, it's functional, because then we can pull and we have something to help us resist away from to get the shoulders back. So if you know you're going to the big toes, you can start from Urdhva Hastasana. Actually, we're all starting there, I forgot. Okay, so we're all raising the arms. Top of the in-breath. Good, hinging, tilt the pelvis forward, swing the arms wide if you're going there, take your hands to your blocks or chair, you're going there. Hook the big toes if you're doing that. Inhale, sternum floats forward. Exhale, you're in your deepest. So if you have your big toe lock, you are hinging elbows wide so that you can try to keep a broadness to your chest. Head relaxes down. Draw the belly in, underside of an umbrella. Shoulder blades move in. Shoulder flesh curls back from front to back. Keep the sternum in your awareness. 
Good. Now go ahead and take your hands to your hips and inhale, come all the way up. Wonderful. Okay, weigh down any dizziness if you're dizzy. Walk your feet, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes. So you're back to mountain. Shoulders in line with your hips, hips in line with your heels, palms forward for that little correction, and then relaxing the lower arms and the palms to face back in. And just blink the eyes closed and see how little effort you can sustain to maintain the wise actions. As we repeat this pose, the effort dial can really be turned down to a simmer. A little more quietness. The, uh, the wise actions show up a bit more spontaneously. Think about your inner thighs rolling back, your tailbone moving in. The cells of the shoulder flash traveling from the front shoulder to the back shoulder. The skull perfectly floating above the spine. Like you're hanging from a coat hanger. Good. So now blink the eyes open. We are going to come to one sitting, no, more than one, two sitting poses. So Marichi Asana, which is a seated forward bend, is first. We're going to do three versions on each side. So again, you want sufficient height under your butt so that your lower back is not rounded. So that's the test for how much height you need. And you're just perching the sitting bones at the edge of the blanket. So it's not really a platform that we're sitting on. It's more like a wedge. So that it kind of forces us to sit on the sitting bones rather than the tailbone. That's kind of the function of the blanket. So make sure to kind of rock back and forth, move the flesh away, be right on the edge of the blanket. And you'll start from Dandasana with your legs out in front of you. Make sure before you get too comfortable that your strap is nearby. Okay, so Marichyasana one or A, different traditions use the num numerical versus the alphabetical, but we're gonna draw the right leg in. So bend the knee and only take the foot as close as you can maintain the perch over the sitting bones. If you brought the heel in and you collapsed onto the tailbone and your back turned into a letter C, try stepping the foot forward and recover that erect spine. Okay, so heel in line with sitting bone. The first version we're gonna do is binding hands to foot, which for most of us, we're gonna use the strap. So you're gonna take your right arm within the space of the right knee. So it's a little cramped and confined, but you're not gonna let that distort your shape. So keep your knee clamping in and try to keep your chest open on the right side. Don't let things curl up and close just because you have limited space. So we get into deeper yoga when we have less space, we still have to find the spaciousness. So take hold of the left foot right beneath the ball mounds, the big toe, small toe ball mounds. And feel free to wrap your hands once, I always do, because it just conserves a little energy. <clears throat> wrap the knuckles with the strap, pulling the shoulders back, so flesh of the shoulders. Squeeze the knee toward the arm. <clears throat> One way you'll know if you have enough moving to midline with the knee is you feel just as much weight to your inner right foot as you do to your outer right foot. Okay, sit up nice and tall. Float the sternal kite, all four sides. Exhale, you're gonna come forward, keeping that sternum in your awareness. Keep the shoulders in your awareness. Don't let your head fly six feet in front of the spine. Keep the head tracking with the spine. Nobody cares how deep you go as long as you're in integrity. So you might only move a millimeter, that's fine. Okay. Inhale, come up. You can bring the strap with you and just put it off to the side. And now you're gonna raise the arms 
And on an exhale, bring your right hand to your left thigh and your left hand just kind of propped off to the side on the floor, like tenting up, tenting up on the fingertips. And now in an upright way, just kind of turn your torso to the left, okay? We can bring more depth to our forward bends when we move the spine in different directions, laterally and revolving spine in a twist. So now you're gonna just kind of dip your torso down toward the floor, just a little. So you're no longer as upright. So just a little taste of a forward bend, but we're still twisting. Nothing crazy. And on an inhale, you're gonna come out of it all the way back up. Good. So last but not least with Marichiyasana, we're gonna feel the flavor of the bind, which is why we have the strap. So there's many ways to come into this, but I find that the simplest, least awkward, and you can work with an open strap, doesn't have to be a loop. You're gonna grab your strap from behind. So the strap is running behind your back and you're holding it really wide. Your palms face forward, your knuckles face back. Okay, so we're kind of reverse engineering ourselves into the pose, which is fine, okay. So you're gonna come forward enough that you can try to drop your right arm to the front side of the right leg. Did I lose some people there? Oh, it looks like we got it. Okay, now you're gonna hold the strap differently so your palms face back and you're gonna to start to crawl the hands together. <clears throat> okay, so your palms face back now and you're crawling the hands together. One day your hands are gonna meet, maybe. Maybe not in this lifetime, but maybe they'll meet in another lifetime. Okay, so we feel the curly shoulders, the retracting chest. We need to reverse that. So we're winding the flesh of the shoulder, flesh from front shoulder back, move the shoulder blades in, broaden your chest, float the kite. This is more important than being face to knee, okay? So your face comes to your knee on another day. What's most important today is getting the sternum forward. Float the belly back, underside of an umbrella, which is a soft way to say that. We're not saying... We're not saying to tack your stomach to your back body. Float the stomach to your back body, okay? Go to your deepest, see if you can maintain some of the resistance of the shoulders that wanna curl down. See if you can keep the chest in the sunlight, okay? And then inhale, release the, open the space between the hands, unhook the arm and extend the leg. Okay, give your legs a little bounce, wake them up. Rolling pin the legs, refresh your legs. It's important, RHS, and we do all that adduction and it's tiring, so we wanna recover, shake them, bounce them, roll them. And we'll do the same three to the other side. So both hands underneath left knee, heel comes in as close as you can maintain that really nice erect spine. So both arms, within the space of the left knee. You might have to walk your left foot out a little bit wider. So that might be something you need to do to keep the foot balanced and to be able to keep your chest open. We're gonna take hold of the right foot, just beneath the line of the big toe, small toe, ball mounts, wrap the hands. Starting position, you shouldn't see shoulders in your peripheral vision. You should feel the external rotation of the shoulders. Good, sternum is lifted, it's aloft. Come to the top of an in-breath, tilt the pelvis forward, lead with that sternum, float the belly back, shoulders winding front to back. Watch that skull that wants to float forward. Keep your skull tracking with the spine, keep your eyes grounded into the head. Keep squeezing knee toward shoulder, good. Go to your deepest, just bowing, just for, just dipping down, just for a couple breaths. And then inhale, come up. Strap aside. Both arms go up. On an exhale, left hand comes to the outer right thigh. Right hand is gonna be propped out in front of you on the fingertips. Starting in an upright spine, revolve your spine as well as you can to the right. And after a few good exhales, you've revolved your spine pretty well. You're gonna take that 
Nice deep twist, you're gonna keep it. And you're just gonna dip your torso toward the floor. So forward bend with the twist is gonna really amplify the next thing we do. So just keep it there, a couple of breaths. Feel the rib cage turning. Right side ribs rolling back, left side ribs rolling forward. On an in breath, take that breath up and out of the twist. Grab your strap from behind. We'll start with palms facing forward, which is a way to signal the shoulders to be in that good external rotation. Wide, 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 because you're going to need all that room to drop your arm in front of your left shin. Okay, once you have the arm there, then you can grab the strap in the other way so your hands uh, <clears throat> are going to start to crawl together, your knuckles face forward. Good. Palms face back. And then you might have collapsed the chest there. So you need to recover. Shoulders move back. Think about the four sides of the kite. Try to find all four of them in the sunlight. Okay, bring some weight to the inner left foot. Top of the in-breath, exhale, bow. Resist the shoulders away from the floor. Good. Last exhale. And inhale, come up. All the way up, widen the hands on that strap, let go of it, extend the leg, bounce the legs, rolling pin the legs. Good. All right, so we are gonna come into a passive reclining bridge pose just to cleanse the palate from this practice. We need to bring our our spine back to kind of a neutral position through a soft back bend. We would not follow with an extreme back bend. That would be not practicing ahimsa, which is the non harming attribute. So we want to use a block or a bolster under the sacrum. And it can be low, it can be medium. I would not do a high position that's a little aggressive for what we need today. Take a wider stance with your feet and don't bring your heels in as close as you know they can go. Have your shins more running vertically, knees in line with, with heels. Your toes do face forward. We don't want to toe out. That would distort the pose. So toes in front of heels. And then let your arms rest in a way that your palms are up and you feel a lot of groundedness to your shoulder girdle. And then rock your head until you feel the back of the neck elongate and the chin kind of snuggle down toward the chest. And then just become passive. So this is not your active bridge pose. This is supported. Every time you exhale, sacrum drops anchored into your prop. And of course the belly follows and kind of hammocks into the pelvis. The floor is a great teacher to keep the chest really in the sunlight, the shoulders back without any effort. We're facing gravity in the right direction here. And if you want to, go ahead and extend your legs one at a time and try to rest on the heels with the toes aligning above the heels. Don't let your toes fan out. So roll your inner thighs down. You might wanna give additional weight to your heels to drive the tailbone into the body. Keep the chin tucked toward the chest. Soften your gaze, let your eyes point toward your cheeks. And if you did extend your legs, start to move back to bent knees, soles of the feet on the floor, and lift your hips. Take the block away or the bolster. Walk the spine down. So we're going to finish with a twist, supine twist. 
arms extending sideways, palms down, left leg crosses over right leg. Tuck your right hip to the center of the mat, stack your left hip above it, let your legs fall gently to the floor, to the right. Right hand holds them there. Just the weight of the hand is enough. You don't have to be super aggressive about it. Roll your head, look to the left, and now turn the left palm open, which just feels so good in the chest and armpit area. Soft, supple spine, so juicy. This twist is so good for our spines. Every exhale, squeeze like you're wringing out a rag. Every inhale, recover length to your spine, tailbone to brainstem. Try to eliminate any unnecessary tension or resistance. It could be where you're meeting the floor. It could be where your thighs meet. It could be the exposed left side of your body that you haven't yet given permission to break free. Just expanding that side body with the next few breaths. Second side, just gently ease yourself to the middle first. And when you uncross your legs, spend some time finding alignment, hips, shoulders, skull, torso, feet, all of it. So you wanna start really symmetrically, spaciously. Stretch the arms perpendicular again from the torso, palms down, right leg crosses over left. Shifting onto your left hip, right hip rolls above left, legs fall to the left, Left hand, add some weight to the legs to kind of stay put. If they shift, let them shift. Resisting the shifting would just create tension. Rolling your head to the right, flip your right palm open. And then just surrender, breath by breath. Just going limp to allow the spine to receive the twist. And when you feel it's time, you're going to gently shift back to center. And you'll spend a little time arranging yourself and addressing anything else that wants to move. Setting up for final resting pose. Maybe propping behind the knees with a bolster. Make sure the head has support. If it needs support. Removing glasses if you wear them, placing them somewhere safe. Making sure to cover your body if you sense you will become cold. And maybe placing an eye pillow or the strap over your eyes if your eyes have trouble remaining closed. Just kind of methodically moving attention from your head down the body. Like you're turning all the lights off in the building. Just let everything become passive, surrendered, expansive, soft. Touching all the interior spaces of your body with your own awareness. Feeling your body melting into the floor. The effort of your practice falling away. The residue of awareness that your practice has left behind. body breathing on its own. 
as if you're watching somebody else breathing. Sensing the full circumference of your awareness. You're free to always stay as long as you like. If you're ready to come out of the pose, just start to invite a few deeper breaths without inviting any agitation or any strain. Just slow, sweeping breaths. Maybe starting to squeeze your fingers in and extend them back out. Maybe doing the same with the toes. Moving into rotating the wrists and ankles, gently rocking the head. Maybe moving into bent knees and elbows. Shifting to your right side. And again, without any extraneous effort, slowly bring yourself to seated. And just like you begin a practice, taking just a few moments to conclude, to, to feel in to the body, sense the, the head space, the fluctuations of thought that the practice can bring stillness to. So just sensing yourself here. And then joining the hands together in front of the heart. Breathing into that sternal kite, keeping it aloft as you exhale and bow. Lifting the head. place within me that I know to be divine. I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Okay, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye everyone.